This is our 1985 view of the railway junction, where the line to Gloucester and Cheltenham diverges away from the main line. In the background are the offices for the railway works, where once designers laboured to create the latest in engineering excellence. Our 1985 view shows the yellow tamping machine used for keeping the track in tip-top condition, stable at Swindon's refuelling point. As we turn the clock forward 31 years to the modern railway, the historic buildings remain. However, the fueling point has gone and the track has been rationalised. This view will dramatically change in the near future when electric wires are installed and for the very first time, electric trains will run through Swindon. Quick mention of the high-speed train or 125 celebrating its 40th birthday this year. Today, they're in the colours of First Great Western, a company that's changed its name to GWR. New electric trains will soon replace the 125. Modern offices, 1870s style. Here's a view taken from the south side of the railway, looking across to the main offices in 1985. At this time, they were still in use as the main administration block for the works that employed around 2,500 people. The flag still proudly flying, this was a familiar view for rail travellers passing on their way west. Today, 31 years later, thankfully little has changed. The restored buildings now house English heritage and still displays the engraved stone plinths of early Firefly class GWR locomotives. The block used to also house the main drawing office where engineers drew up plans for their latest creations. Just next to it is evidence of the new electric railway that's on its way. Transformers installed line side to cope with the enormous amount of power needed to run the railway. I wonder if Brunel would have approved millions of pounds overspent and several years behind schedule. This 1985 view shows a diesel multiple unit, repaired, refurbished, repainted and almost ready to go back into service. These trains were mainly used for shorter distances and commuter services. When new, they replaced many of the smaller steam locomotives and carriages. Behind it, what was known as R Shop, built in 1874. By this time, it was being used for work on these diesel units. Today's view, from roughly the same location, shows the sidings outside the works have gone. The DMUs have also been scrapped and replaced by more modern rolling stock. But the biggest changes, though, are to the building. This part of the workshops now is just a skeleton. The roof was removed and new apartment blocks have been built using some of the original walls. For one year back in the early 90s, this was the home of the National Railway Museum on tour. The Railway Museum in York was having work done to its roof and the old Swindon works proved the perfect temporary home. We're in Robborn Road for our next view and remarkably it's changed very little. By the time these images were taken, the footbridge from one side of the rail works to the other had already been removed from where the green fence panel can be seen. In the very early days, the road crossed over the railway by means of a level crossing. But you can clearly see how the road's now been lowered to pass under the railway. Only just enough room for a bus to pass under. The pattern store was built in 1897. It's a fireproof building housing four separate water tanks on the roof. The modern view shows that very little has changed. The building still in use as a restaurant, although the windows no longer boarded up as they were in our 1980s view. A narrow walkway along the side of Robborn Road still provides a challenge for pedestrians passing each other as the traffic roars by. The solid engineering brick-built structure is unmistakable, a monument to Swindon's engineering history. Even after the announcement was made of the closure, the battle went on. A huge campaign was launched to try and get the government to change their minds and keep the works open. A series of protest marches took place like the one we can see in these images. It shows the town's railway workers being joined by union colleagues from across the country, out in support of their campaign. 
The mayor of Thamesdown, as it was then known, Councillor Percy Jeffries, is being seen dropped off in his Daimler to join the march through the town centre. Of course, it amounted to nothing, and the closure went ahead. The big celebrations that were planned in the town for the 150th anniversary were all cancelled, and the railworks played no part in what was supposed to be a year of extreme pride and celebration. Comparing the views in 1985 to those of 2016 shows how, thankfully, some of the railway structure has been preserved. It also emphasises just how much has been swept away. same march through the town is seen at Regent Circus, some wag having placed a sticker on the back of the town's MP at the time, Simon Coombs. Feeling was high in the town and many blamed the Conservative government under Maggie Thatcher for not investing in the railways. This 1980s view was taken at the foot of the pattern store and shows the sidings outside the works and the main line to Bristol and London with St Mark's Church in the mid-distance. A high-speed train passes by. Here's the same view from 2016 and it's clear this land is no longer connected with the railway. The sidings have gone and the fence prevents any pedestrians straying onto the track. In the foreground are the upper concrete decks of the bridge that passes over Robbourne Road. The iconic HST or 125 is in its last few years of service, having now carried passengers through Swindon for 40 years this year and clocked up millions of miles. This is the foundry shop next to the railway. It was extended with such precision that it's difficult to see where the original 1873 building joined the 1922 extension. Such was the detail of the Great Western Railway wanting to maintain the view to passengers passing by. We catch a glimpse of the east end of the shop and see that over 30 years later, this building still stands. It was used as a workshop to continue steam engine preservation after the works closed in 1986. But this year it opened as an extension to the Great Western Outlet Shopping Centre. Even the chimney still remains between the two gabled roofs. The building is just across the railway from St Mark's Church and today faces steam, the museum of the Great Western Railway. Well, finally, we're going to try and end on a more positive note and see some of Swindon's finest work in action. This is the most famous Swindon and GWR engine number 6000, King George V, steaming away from Swindon on its way to Gloucester. Although any GWR 150 celebrations involving Swindon works were cancelled, there were a series of other events across the West Country, including these steam specials in the summer of 1985. Today, the same view shows a modern diesel unit on its way to Cheltenham. Thankfully, the King-class locomotive still survives and sits pride of place inside its birthplace as a tribute to every man that performed any one of the hundreds of jobs inside the factory. <music> 2016 Swindon's 175th anniversary year. This is my tribute to the town, the great railway workshops of the GWR and the men and women who worked inside at Swindon. <laughs> <laughs>